2020 is going to be undoubtedly an unforgettable year due to the pandemic of the new coronavirus and the changes it has brought. My name is Elena and today I'll try to give a bird's eye view about this new virus after a research I've done during the last month. All started in December 2019 in Wuhan, where some patients presented to the local hospitals with severe pneumonia of unknown cause. Many of the initial cases had a common exposure to the Huanan wholesale seafood market, which also traded live species of bats, snakes, pangolins and bungers. The virus identified as a coronavirus and environmental samples from the Huanan seafood market also tested positive, signifying that the virus originated from there. The virus was renamed SARS-CoV-2 to destigmatize the association of the virus with any geographic location or nationality and related to the disease symptomatology. Coronaviruses are widespread to human and cause respiratory, enteric, hepatic and neurologic diseases. They are positive stranded RNA viruses with a crown-like appearance under the microscope due to the presence of the spike glycoproteins on the envelope. The virus has also four important structural proteins. According to a recent research, a spike mutation, which probably occurred in late November 2019, triggered jumping to human. Now, let's move on the so-called reproductive number or R0. It indicates how contagious an infectious disease is. RO tells you the average number of people who will contract a contagious disease from the person with that disease. The current estimate of COVID-19 is 2 to 2.7. Another important aspect of any infectious agent is called incubation period. It's the time from the moment of the exposure to an infectious agent until signs and symptoms of the disease appear. The World Health Organization estimates that the incubation time from infection to presentation of symptoms for coronavirus is 5.2 days with a range of 2 to 14 days. The virus could be transmitted from human to human and symptomatic people are the most frequent source. Moreover, there are suggestions that individuals who remain asymptomatic could transmit the virus. The transmission is believed to occur through respiratory droplets from coughing and sneezing. I would like also to mention that coronaviruses are sensitive to the heat and to the ultraviolet rays. They can also be effectively inactivated by lipid solvents, including ether 75%, ethanol, chlorine or other disinfection products. Some groups, of course, are at high risk of severe disease. These groups are older adults further classified as over 65 years old and patients with serious chronic underlying medical conditions namely cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, cancer, chronic pulmonary diseases. I would like now to mention the clinical characteristics of the virus. The majority of the patients present the following initial symptoms. Fever, cough, dyspnea, myalgia, headache, diarrhea, rhinorrhea, sore throat, sputum production, and chills. But how COVID-19 can be diagnosed? Specific diagnosis is by specific molecular tests on respiratory samples, throat swab, nasopharyngeal swab, sputum or endotracheal aspirates. The virus could be also detected in the stool and in severe cases in the blood. Laboratory investigations are usually non-specific. Last but not at least, the chest X-ray usually shows lung abnormalities in the SARS-CoV-2 infection. Therefore, it's essential to consider the travel history and the clinical symptoms. A lot of preventative strategies and non-therapeutical interventions have been employed to mitigate the spread of the new disease. 
However, there is no specific antiviral treatment recommended and currently there is no available vaccine against the COVID-19. Subsequently, one of the most important aspects to win this battle with coronavirus is a strong management. I would like to summarize some important management steps for this virus. This new virus outbreak has challenged the economy and of course our public health. Thank you so much for watching and all together, stronger, we can win this hard battle against coronavirus. Thank you again so much.